Survivalism is supposed to be about facing harsh realities, and this will probably be the harshest video by far which most survivalists hear. And my intent here is not to troll, but to, to point out some really important issues that I think most survivalists are not aware of. And if you can really try to analyze the, the truth of what I'm saying, I, I think there is an enormous potential for improvement in the mentality and the preparation of most survivalists. In this video, first I'll review some practical issues that are overlooked by the large majority of survivalists, and then I'll, in the end, go over some much more important issues related to psychology. So when you're studying or preparing for anything, it's by far the most useful to get real-world experience or to get your information from people with real-world experience. And in the case of survivalism, that would be people who have lived through severe economic downturns or civil wars. And instead, most survivalists, the large majority, are just armchair theorists speculating among themselves. And so they come up with what are highly improbable scenarios that they're preparing for. And they're wasting a lot of time in preparing for unlikely events without recognizing the more likely turn of events. I don't claim to be any expert in survivalism, but at least I've firsthand seen half dozen or so cases of civil war and severe economic downturn. You might consider that if you really want to see the most likely real-world collapse scenario for yourself, simply go to the nearest neighborhood which has a similar population density but where people earn about 50 percent less than your current neighborhood, or in the case of an extreme collapse where people earn 90 percent less than your current neighborhood. That's going to give you the most likely real-world scenario, and it may show that the large majority of preparation wasn't the most efficient. For example, there's a lot of discussion of guns in the survivalist community. Nothing against guns, but if you go to one of these neighborhoods, you'll see that interpersonal skills, the ability to interact well with people under stress, the ability to avoid crime by dressing down and not projecting wealth, those skills are far more important than how many guns you own. The second thing which a lot of survivalists prepare for is problems with food, and you see them often preparing for this by storing up cans of food and freeze-dried food. This assumes the scenario of, of starvation, which is extremely rare. What normally people die from in an economic downturn is, is improper nutrition, and you see that today in America. There are m many people dying of degenerative diseases that are nutrition-related because people think they can't afford a, a decent diet. If you really want to prepare for something realistic and, and even improve your life currently, you would learn more about proper nutrition, preparing food properly, uh, obtaining healthy sources of, of fresh food. Very few people are, are dying of outright starvation and economic collapses. They're almost always dying of diseases brought on by poor nutrition over a, a longer period of time. If you're actually in an outright uh, area where people are starving, it's almost certainly going to be a war zone. And again, you're going to get back to the most important skills, not being how much food you have stored in that war zone, but your interpersonal skills, the amount of money that you have, which can buy your way out of that war zone. When you actually talk to people who have lived through severe economic downturns and civil wars or you observe things firsthand, I think you'll often find that an entirely different skill set is useful compared to what many survivalists assume. For example, the ability to deal well with people under stressful situations is probably one of the most important skills. General knowledge of what to expect, which largely comes from having observed situations like that firsthand. Um, wealth, another thing which survivalists don't focus on so much, you always hear the you can't eat gold thing, but actually having wealth will generally get you out of the worst areas or at least allow you to live in a safer neighborhood. Wealth is often crucial in getting better quality food or better quality medical care. And again, the ability to prepare nutritious food, knowledge of food preparation, one of the most crucial things which often is overlooked. Effective preparation, I believe, will generally make your life better today as well as in an economic downturn because whatever problems you have today are simply going to be magnified after an economic downturn. So for example, if you don't have good nutrition today, it's just going to be that much harder after an economic downturn. If you don't have good interpersonal relationships today, it's simply going to be that much more dangerous after an economic downturn. And that brings me to the issue which is probably most difficult for survivalists to face. I could make one more of thousands of videos glomming on to the popularity of survivalism, but what's really most helpful to people is the things which are most difficult for them to face. And in the case of many, if not most, survivalists, I think that is facing the underlying psychology which is driving this interest in survivalism. I don't mean to be harsh about it, but I think if you really evaluate the psychology of many survivalists, you'll see that they're not so 
concerned particularly about survival in the future, but they're, they're concerned they don't currently have the respect and the sense of power that they would like to have, and so they would prefer to imagine uh, fantasy scenarios where one day they have this respect and power that they currently feel a lack of. And the irony is that if you don't have much power and respect from others in your current life, the same lack of skills is probably going to translate in, into a future scenario. In fact, in a harsh future, the lack of interpersonal skills, the lack of money, is going to translate into an even more difficult life. If you're not happy with something in your life, the most important thing you can do is focus on fixing that problem now and fixing the lack of skills which have led to that problem, fixing it now, rather than engaging in escapism. And that's the very harsh truth that no one is going to tell you in these tens of thousands of survivalism videos and articles that are posted online. Life is supposed to be lived and not just survived, and if you're spending a significant amount of time focusing on mere survival, it's probably useful for you to really honestly evaluate whether that's just escapism and whether you need to consciously focus on a higher purpose in life. There's always a way to achieve a higher purpose as long as you become aware of what you're doing and focus.